Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm actually not like doing a doll unboxing. I just kind of want to talk about, well, Sea Pals. Um, now, I, I really don't know how to best describe them other than uh, this is what happens when the like National Association of Zoos and Aquariums wants to collaborate with a toy company to make a knockoff of Webkins because that's basically what it was. Um, as you can see, this box, very old. Um, I believe these were released in like 2009. Yeah, that tape is, that, that tape is gone. Um, I got this guy off of eBay. This is the Flame Angel Fish. This is from Series 1. As you can see, it says Finger Puppet. I actually have two of these guys because I used to collect these as a kid. Uh, this one, I got it Tuesday mornings. As you can see, very beat up. Has been repaired. But, <laughs> yeah, I just kind of want to talk about these because they're an interesting little thing. I never see any buzz about within the collector community um, in terms of, like, toys. Their eBay like, resale page is practically non-existent. Like, I had to be digging for, for these. Uh, the good news is, not super expensive, and hopefully this video does not change that. Like, I don't know. I just think it's interesting that nobody ever really, like, freaking talks about these. So, why not, why not make a video on them? Uh, this is by no means scripted or anything. This is just my random thoughts about them. Now, I don't plan on opening this guy for you, although the package is damaged, I would like to very much leave him inside. What I find interesting is, like, just how, ugh, the packaging is. Like, not in a bad way, but like, I don't know, it's just sort of charming to have like a stuffed fish in a fishbowl. And they kept that for Series 2. I do still have the Series 2 box from the Stingray, because I did get that one off of eBay as well. Uh, this is the Stingray. Very colorful, very cute. This box was, like, so yellowed and old, so I unboxed them. But what's interesting is there, there was a Series 1 and a Series 2. And I think these were released, like... Okay, this packaging says... Um, it doesn't, it doesn't actually say anything. There's, there's no copyright date for these. There really isn't. Like, it's, it's kind of sad, honestly. Um, and like, I, I've had a, I, I would have made this like a scripted research video if there was any research that could go into this video. Unfortunately, there isn't. Uh, you see, the problem with Sea Pals is... Again, they only made it to two waves, and they were, like, a blip in the toy production world, and basically anything and everything about them is gone. Their website? Defunct. The domain does not exist. Any promotional material that was on YouTube is gone. Like, even the launch video, which they, I remember, they launched with Ripley's Aquarium. Uh, they did, a, like, a whole promo video and for, like, Series 1. That video is no longer on YouTube. I cannot find it anywhere. I have no idea what happened to it. Even checking the Wayback Machine doesn't really help, because, like, everything that is or was, with the exception of the few parenting blog articles on them, is gone gone. Like, just absolutely purged. And part of that is because the company that made them, um, which is Applause by Russ, um, I don't remember exactly when that company ceased to be, but it is no longer a corporate entity, and it kind of took these with them. Like, these were the last thing that that company ever really produced, and I believe this was, like, 2009-2010, but they were on shelves at least at aquariums and museums, until around 2012. Like, there was quite a bit of overstock of them, because they were mass-produced. Um, at least Series 1 was. Series 2, like, it existed one summer, and then never again. Um, I posted about these on Twitter the other day, and, like, there was one person that was like, oh my god, I remember these. 
which truly tells me how little cultural impact Sea Pals had on the world. Um, it also goes to show you, you really cannot compete with Webkins. You can't. You will be extinguished very quickly. Um, at least back in their heyday. But the whole thing with Sea Pals was they would come to these little fish bowls, and it would be like, well, Series 1's box said, donations will be made to local aquariums to support ocean con uh, conservation. Um, so that was changed to just learn about marine life and explore the ocean later. Um, there was an online game that goes to this, hence the website that is no longer a functional domain. Do not go looking for it. It, it will not yield you any results. I've tried. I used to have an account. It, it, it was no longer a functioning website within the year that I had the account. Like, it was that short-lived. Uh, I remember the games actually being, like, really, really boring and really sad, and I think that contributed to the downfall of Sea Pals. Um, there's not really, like, many in-game screenshots anywhere on the internet. There's, like, a few from parenting articles. And even, like, the in-game... Okay, so what's interesting about this one is Series 1 had a completely different, like... You can barely see, but, like, the games that they depict on the Series 1 packaging um, were never actually part of the website. Series 2's packaging depicts the website a little better in terms of, like, showing the fact that it's just a virtual aquarium that you put your little digital version of your pet fish into. And they came with a code right here. I'm not going to be scratching it off because I don't want to damage it. I mean, this cardboard is freaking ancient <laughs> by today's standards. I mean, these were released in the late 2000s. They are old enough to drive a car at this point, so we won't be touching the code. We won't be attempting anything with that, but I just think it's, like, really interesting how these were released before the website was fully refined, and then once Series 2 came out, the website was fully refined, but it wasn't, like, anything at all what was advertised, which I think is a little sad. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go over animals that were released, and then we'll talk about the plushies themselves. We'll be using Series 2 packaging just because it shows every single one that was ever released. I don't have all of them because I, again, was collecting these as a child and just now have the adult money to hunt for them, but released in its entirety, Sea Pals had a banner fish, pink anemone fish, manta ray, sea turtle, shark, seahorse, lobster, purple tang, clownfish, flame angelfish, stingray, octopus, pufferfish, starfish, dolphin, and powdered blue tang. Now, notably, this little angelfish down here in the corner, this emperor angelfish, never released. There were images on the internet for a long time of three prototype fish that never got released, and that would be the Picasso Triggerfish, the Clown Triggerfish, and the Emperor Angelfish. Those images are nowhere to be found on the internet anymore, and I distinctly remember them existing because I printed them out at one point as a child, and I have them sitting in a box somewhere. But those three prototypes never released. It was rumored that they would be exclusive to a resort in Hawaii, but that never happened, clearly. Otherwise, they would have popped up in the secondhand market by now. Um, so this is just like the final lineup that the series had. There were no additional fish made after this, and I think that kind of sucks because they are really cute. Anyway, let's go over the ones that I do have. Obviously, I have the Flame Angelfish. Um, I have two of the Flame Angelfish. This is the one I've had since childhood. As you can see, my mother had to repair it for me when I was a child. And these things were finger puppets. Like, I just... Whoever thought of these, both genius and also why. Because, like, this, this spot on most of the fish, anatomically, is their butthole. So, you're fingering a fish, basically, in order to make them a puppet. And I think that's really unfortunate. <laughs> on, on the Stingray, it's less egregious, but, like, putting it behind the freaking pelvic and anal fins on the fish. Unfortunate choice. Very unfortunate design choice. And as you can see, they really were not hiding the fact that they were attempting to compete with Webkins. 
because the embroidered little emblem thingy. You see, I have a Lemkins here to compare. Um, drastically, very different in terms of style, but you can see what they were going for with these. Um, now, here's the purple tang. This one, the eye got taken off by the dryer at one point during childhood. Um, these are actual glass eyes. Not really ideal for a stuffed children's toy, if you really think about it. I mean, all the things that went into them. I could tell a story about this, how this guy lost his eye, because I used to take him with me to school every day when I was in elementary school, um, after I got him anyways. It was like fourth grade year. Uh, yeah, one of my bullies chucked him at the monkey bars, and both of his eyes went shooting off in different directions. Really not ideal for a children's toy. But... I digress. They always had, like, embroidered details, which is really nice. And, like, the fabric quality is still really good after all these years. Um, and they are still really cute. I want to find another purple tang to keep in box, because obviously this is sad. <laughs> this is really sad. Um, I do have the powdered blue tang. This one shows up on the internet in terms of listings a lot less frequently. And I've noticed that about the Series 2 fish, which really is just, like, the whole... Um, now, Series 2 was this entire bottom row of fish. Like, none of these existed prior to, like, series when Series 1 came out. Um, and what I've noticed is Series 2's fish don't show up in the secondhand market as often, which leads me to believe they were cl produced closer to cancellation of the line. But that also doesn't add up, because I distinctly remember being able to find them at the same time as Series 1. Um, it's super weird. But, like, the powdered blue tang, I got at the Legoland Aquarium, actually. I distinctly remember getting the powdered blue tang there. That was, like, my first one. Um, it's a very unique fish. You never really see these guys produced in terms of, like, any museum or aquarium memorabilia, which is another thing that I collect. Again, this is why I don't describe myself as a doll channel, because I collect all sorts of stuff. But, yeah. This one, never see it pop up in the secondhand market. I've seen one listing for it, and it was sold for a maximum amount of 5 euros, which is actually really sad. Uh, the Stingray, I do have. I had them for about a year and a half at this point. That's how recent of a purchase they were. Um, really cute, really colorful. This is their box, um, the box that they came in. I got them on eBay for like 25 bucks, which expensive for a plush toy. I don't even remember what these guys used to retail for. The one box I have that still has a price tag, as you can see, the price tag has absolutely withered off. I think their MSRP was somewhere around $9.99, which isn't bad, but like, I, I wish there was more information available about them because they're such an interesting little moment in just like toy history because they are really well designed nothing came of them but like i still think they're really cool and then the last one i have on hand today is the banner fish this one you would still be able to find at, like, Tuesday mornings and aquarium gift shops up until 2012. Series 1 lasted a lot longer than Series 2 did. Series 2 was phased out after about a year, but Series 1 was still available long after that, which I think is quite interesting. Um, now, the banner fish, this one is probably in the best shape. It's because I never really played with it much as a kid. Um... This one also hides the finger puppet hole a lot better than the others do. Um, actually, no. The Stingray gets that award. The Stingrays is, like, quite literally on the underside. I still don't get why they had to be finger puppets. Like, that choice is very bizarre to me in retrospect. Um, I don't know why they couldn't just be, like, standard stuffed animals. And I think maybe making them a little bit more like Webkins and the fact that their code would be in, like, a tag or something. Like, yeah, the packaging is cute, but do we really need it? I really want to see these reproduced, which is sad for me because I know it will never happen. The company that made them 
does not exist as a corporate entity. And I don't know how many times I need to repeat that to myself because there is no hope for these coming back, even just like as a cute little museum gift shop thing where you could buy them separately without the packaging. No, that's never going to happen. Um, and that's unfortunate. Now, I do have the shark and the pink anemone fish somewhere. Somewhere in one of my boxes, I have them. Was not able to locate them for this video, which is unfortunate. Now, in terms of how many times I see these guys pop up on the secondhand market, it's, it's a gamble because there are other things known as sea pals. Unfortunately for me, who's trying to collect them all, all these years later, sea pals is also the name of both a toddler swimwear company and a mid 2000s skateboard company. So finding listings for these guys, very difficult not at all feasibly possible to do most of the time. Like, you have to do digging if you want to find one of these on the secondhand market, which is absolutely unfortunate. It also begs the question, because these were mass-produced, where the hell did they all go? Because you'd think that, again, being a, a mass-produced plush toy, they would pop up more frequently on the secondhand market, or you'd find them at garage sales or in thrift stores. But no, they seemingly just like ceased to exist. It's there's there's no record of them anywhere on the freaking internet outside of like a few parent articles. And some of those parent articles don't exist either because those website domains are gone. It's so bizarre. Nonetheless, these are classified as vintage now. And I can live with that. I just I don't know what the future holds for them. The future was never bright for them at all. Will they be remembered in the grand scheme of things? Probably not. Will they be remembered a little bit better now because I talked about them? Hopefully. But yeah, these guys, they're cute, but ultimately their existence was futile. <laughs> that's a very sad note to end a video on, but that's all I have to say on Sea Pals. Did I jog some childhood memories? Let me know in the comments below. I thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Au revoir!